we're looking at structured uncertainty now. And in the problem of structured uncertainty, we have an uncertain state model. In this case, we don't have an input. We're just looking at the stability issue. Okay. And so in structured uncertainty, our uncertain A matrix is of this form. It's some nominal A matrix. And then I have an uncertainty term where I have a G and an H that determine the structure of the uncertainty. That is, where does the uncertainty enter into the system? So there's, so our delta is our uncertainty. And we can define, for example, the set S such that um, S is the set of uncertainty matrix that have uh, their norm less than one. Okay, so it may not be obvious that that's what this is saying, but this is the norm. So the largest singular value then must be greater than or equal to this. And so clearly the norm must be greater than or equal to this. So how does this kind of uncertainty arise? This, this kind of looks, looks kind of specific. How, how do I get something constant and then something that has the uncertainty term associated with it? Well, here's an example. Suppose we have a tractor trailer system. So the tractor trailer has mass M1 and on board the tractor trailer is another vehicle that's lashed to the, to the semi um, and that has mass M2. And suppose the exact value of the mass uh, is unknown. Okay, so I also have, so this connection is through a spring, which has a spring constant associated with it. The, the wheels each have their own friction coefficients associated with them. And so we can get an overall state model for this two mass system. Okay, and we can go through and show that it has a differential equation that looks like this. X dot is equal to AX plus BU where A and B are both uncertain in this case. So A is equal to A naught plus G delta H. B is equal to B naught plus G delta C. So notice that the G here structure is the same for both A and B. Okay, And delta is of magnitude less than or equal to one. So this is, we can, we can set up a problem like this and end up with a, uh, a system. Notice that we don't have just a state model, that's the state. We also have the input occurring in this system. And, um, and so this is the form that it takes. And, and this is derived in the examples section. So we'll, we'll leave it for that. Just let you know that this has a model that looks like that. All right, so given this uncertain state model, we have defined this set. And so an important question is, under what conditions can we say that this system is stable. Okay, so we know that the uncertainty is less than or equal to one, and so clearly whether this system is unstable or not depends a lot on the G and the H. Okay, so, but how does it depend? How do we actually assess whether or, it, whether or not it is uh, stable or not? So, well, we know that Lyapunov theory can be used to prove stability, and so it turns out the uncertainty system is stable for all uncertainties with norm less than or equal to one if and only if there exists a positive definite P that satisfies this linear matrix inequality. And so I would, what I'd like to do is actually go through and prove this, and I will prove this, but not here. We'll save that for the proofs video. So, but basically, I get a linear matrix inequality, and not, if I notice this guy, this guy looks an awful lot like a uh, Lyapunov type term. But then I have G, I have terms that involve the G and the H. The G and the H uh, play a role in the structure, the uncertainty of the structure. Okay. And so if all so notice that in order for this overall matrix to be negative definite, I need this to be negative definite, and then I need the sure complement of this to be negative definite, which is all of this stuff plus this, this tran transpose times itself and um, all of that need to be negative definite. So that corresponds to this A naught at least being um, stable. If it's not stable, none of that, the rest of that stuff is gonna happen. So clearly the nominal system, okay? So the nominal A naught is the nominal system. That's a system when you, we have zero uncertainty, okay? You have zero uncertainty. And so clearly, if this nominal system is not is not stable, then the uncertain system will not be stable. So we can see all of that from this inequality. 
So for structured in uncertainty, uncertainty, for an LTI system, the stability of a system with structured uncertainty can be established by a linear matrix inequality. So an important question is, how can we find a controller to ensure that robust stability? That is, to make an unstable system robustly stable. So a system is robustly stable if it is stable for all uncertainties in the uncertainty set. In general, this is a complicated problem. And, uh, but we can, we can attack it using state feedback. So we're going to look at this problem in the case of state feedback. So remember, state feedback is powerful in that, um, generally speaking, if, if, it can't be done, if it can be done, it can be done with state feedback. If it, if it can't be done with state feedback, generally speaking, it can't be done. Okay, so that's, it's important to know. That's all, so it's always a good place to look at state feedback first to see uh, what can or cannot be done. All right, so given this uncertain model, now where we have this type of uncertainty, that is A is equal to A naught plus G delta H, B is equal to B naught plus G delta C. Okay, and so we, we saw this in, in the previous example, and it's common to have this kind of a situation. This kind of situation is said to have matching conditions, and by matching conditions, we mean that our uncertainty enters the same way into both the A and the B matrices. All right, so now using state feedback, U is equal to KX plus R, so this is the state feedback part. Can we stabilize the system for all delta with delta less than or equal to one? So clearly, there needs to be some kind of stabilizability condition in the system, but it's not at all clear how. And if, we, if you notice, we don't just have A and B, we have uncertain A and uncertain B. So it's not just the A that's uncertain, it's the B that's uncertain also. And so when we look at this problem then, we have a fairly complicated problem. So it turns out we have this uncertain, structured uncertainty theorem. It says, the uncertain system can be stabilized for all delta in the uncertainty set if and only if there exists a positive definite P and a matrix Y that satisfies this linear matrix inequality. And so you can see that both P and Y appear in this inequality. Okay. In this case, the state feedback gain with K given by this will work. So in this case, we have if and only if condition. So the system can be stabilized for all delta in the uncertainty set if this uh, inequality is satisfied. It turns out that not only does this tell us that when a solution exists, but it also gives us a state feedback gain. Wow, that's pretty sweet. It's not often that you have a result that not only tells you that a problem or when a problem can be solved, but gives you the answer when it does. So that it's really sweet when, it, when you get something like this. So. Um, Notice that this P, that this Y is not the state feedback gain, but is clearly related to the state feedback gain. And we have here a linear matrix inequality in, in the, both the unknowns Y and P. Okay, and so you can see how the G enters, how the H enters, and you can see that the way the G, H, and H enter is very similar to what we had in the, um, in the, um, just the regular, uh, uncertain system problem. But now we also have the, so, but that was just the uncertainty in A. We also have an uncertainty in B. Okay, and so we notice how the the C matrix here is related to the B matrix. That's part of the B matrix. And so that needs to be taken into account too in all of this. So, so we have this situation, which is pretty sweet. The proof of this was is given in the proofs video. So, the necessity comes from the fact that delta can be any element in the set S. In this case, the inequalities are tight since we can always find a delta that will actually fit the inequality. The result obtained uses Lyapunov theory and, and, um, and uh, the theorem also relies on the fact that for a linear system, if any control can accomplish the robust stability, linear state feedback can accomplish it. So an important side question is, what about observer feedback? Is it possible to use observer feedback? Well, I'm not going to go into that here, but you can find out more about this in 555. 
What about the discrete time problem? So given the uncertain discrete time system, so notice that this is the stability problem for a system in discrete time, where again we have the same kind of uncertainty appearing. So again, if the uncertainty has norm less than or equal to 2, then the uncertain system is stable if and only if there is a positive definite P that satisfies this type of inequality. And we can see that this is like a um, discrete time Lyapunov inequality. But instead of just having the A, we have A and uh, G and the H appearing in here. So not only must the spectral radius of A be less than 1, but the spectral radius of this matrix must also be less than 1, where we have the system matrix. Okay, Such a system is a contractive operator okay. and is related to the H infinity norm of the system being less than 1. So we have a similar result from continuous time as discrete time. In discrete time, then, how can we find a control to provide the stability of such a system? And then we can try to try state feedback for the as for the continuous time problem but it turns out in discrete time the problem is a lot more complicated than the continuous time problem so if you want answers tune in to ee552